Kyle Bradshaw from Cruiser Customizing. Gregory Beck with Tucker Rocky Distributing. On this week's Wednesday with Greg, we'd like to talk a little bit about how you prepare yourself for the elements. For example, today I left my house and it was 50 degrees. Now about 11 o'clock in the morning, it's probably getting close to 70 degrees. And by the middle of the afternoon, we'll be up to 94 degrees. Now if you're traveling through the hills or mountains around here, when you get to those higher elevations, it's still going to be cold. How do you battle that, Greg? By being prepared, by planning ahead, having equipment that will allow you to be comfortable in all those temperatures. A lot of times you hear people, you know, they ride into a situation and then they're not prepared for the cold or they get out of the cold because that's where they started at into the rest of the day and all of a sudden they're riding in t-shirts and shorts. Yeah, not good. Uh, protection uh, is important. You know, you fall down on one of these things that's going to hurt and you should be covered properly. And when the temperature gets up there and, and you need to have a little bit more uh, ventilation, that's good, but you still need the protection. You don't know if you're going to fall down on a hot day or a warm day. So they call them accidents. They're not planned. Yeah, you, you never know. And when you're, and when you're comfortable, your, your mind is, is sharper. Hmm. So it, you know, it's pretty easy for us to uh, get you warmer these days. We have electric clothing. It's a lot more difficult to keep the temperature down. Uh, good venting is important. Good venting or some of those cooling vests like we have from Technique and some of the other brands that you soak in the water and then put on that evaporative cooling helps keep you cool. Yeah, those those are like renewable resources really. You just stop after an hour or so and, and wet them again. So one of the things I like to focus on a little bit is what do you take with you? Normally I travel with two or three different pairs of gloves. One that's going to handle cold, one that's going to be just an over all around riding glove, and then one that's vented with some mesh so when it gets really hot yeah, I gotta say, I'm the, I'm the same way. I have two gloves I usually have. It's a mesh armor glove and then my heated gloves. Now, my heated gloves act like two gloves in one. Mm. Without the heat, they're real comfortable and they're waterproof. With the heat, they're really comfortable and waterproof. And the other ones are more vented for warmer, uh, you know, warmer weather. I also, in, in my jacket pocket, always keep like a, a neck up thingy or a balaclava. I always have those handy just because it doesn't make sense to be comfortable here and cold here and freezing. It doesn't make sense. Some of the things to think about before you go out on the road. Where am I going to be traveling? What are the potential weather conditions I'm going to run into? And even if the potential's not there, it's always good to plan ahead and be prepared. Yeah, you know, back in the day, I used to always wear leathers everywhere I went because that's what cool guys did. But when you start getting caught out in high temperatures and you're stuck in them because you got nothing underneath, that really sucks. So. I wear textiles now because they're a lot more comfortable. Now even today's leather is different than leather of years gone by. You've got some major venting. You can even get leather that's actually fully perforated so you get that airflow effect from a leather jacket. Now leather is probably going to be the most protective thing you can wear. Not only do today's textiles wear almost as good as leather, but they also have inherent benefits such as their lightweight. They're easy to pack away. The protection can come in and out and is adjustable. There's a bunch of stuff around the textile garment that makes it a little bit more functional than the overall leather garment. Yeah, and you know, low speed crashes, in other words, like below 80, uh, the textiles work really good. Above that, they get worn through. So you don't want to go to the road race track wearing uh, nylons, but, but again, you don't want to go out on the street wearing full road race leathers on a 100 degree day. So it's the right equipment for the right job at the right time. There it is. Plan accordingly and take what you need in order to be protected with this one. Uh -huh.